Hello, everybody. It's again five o'clock p.m. European time, and I welcome everybody for another internet interview, uh, this live stream today with a wonderful guest again, Yaya and John from London. And uh, I, I greet you very much because honestly, today it was very stressful. So we did not have even time to prepare anything. This is really now one minute we see each other. <laughs> so it's totally today really very spontaneous. And I'm very happy that it worked out because it was a little bit really stressed today. So I'm so glad that we can meet all of us together here. Welcome for any of the messages here which comes and I am sure that we will have a wonderful time. So I'd like to introduce, of course, Ian Jones. It's not necessary to introduce him as a, the most, really one of the most um, famous virtuoso in harp. And uh, I think that we will have a really wonderful hour with our guest today. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's the teacher of the Royal uh, College of Music in, in London. And uh, I'm proud to be his colleague as well from this year. And uh, it's really wonderful. I must say that because we are at the first worldwide online harp congress uh, interview and it is memory of the third world harp congress in vienna in 1987 where also Ian jones was performing and you will see right after this interview you will see his performance which was just so marvelous that there was endless applause which could not finish at all that even joseph molnar had to stop the audi audience to, <laughs> to clap you will see all of that this i have left today i did not cut this kind of experience because it was so so unique and I must say it was my first experience to hear Yayan Jones to, to play and I was incredibly impressed by his performance. He was playing Parish Alva's introduction cadence and rondo and he inspired me so much that I started to learn the piece right away afterwards and I really I just now my talk is enough and I think that we are all excited to hear something from Yayan Jones. I welcome you Yayan and thank you very much for your time. Yana, it's lovely to see you again. Uh, of course, it, you know, we're talking about Vienna. It was 1987, no? Absolutely. But we didn't know each other then. I think that was the first time we passed each other somewhere. But I know I heard about you there for the first time. I heard I mean, everybody was talking about this wonderful young girl, young Czech girl who was playing. And, you know, I, I remember these things. But what I do remember about going to... Uh, Vienna was I drove there from London I drove there all the way you know how crazy I, I go in the car I drive all over the place but uh, that was my I think one of my first long drive experiences and I remember driving there and I remember sharing a flat an apartment with some friends and uh, I think Simona Marquez was with us Ankel Padilla the late I'm sorry to say Ankel from Mexico was sharing with us and, and I think one or two one other I, I don't remember but anyway that was Vienna, 1987. It was, and that I think was one of the last congress before we had internet. Huh? I bet so. I, I really don't know because the next one. I don't think that even in '90 we we were using the internet yet. No. I don't think so. In the in the Paris, it was still without. It was only faxes, maximum faxes, because Absolutely. even the faxes had not exist at that time too much. But it was only the letters, and uh, I know that it was. I am impressed how everything worked out at that time, how everybody well, could... You know, it's strange you say that. It worked out so well in those days without <laughs> mobile phones, without the internet, without all this technology we have today. Absolutely. And now look at the world, you know, we're in a different place. Absolutely. Really. And Absolutely. It, makes you, it makes you think, no? <laughs> That's true. I just see that we have some some messages here, and uh, I just want to share it uh, to say hello. We will see on Sunday together on uh, at two o'clock European European time, Central European time. So hello to you as well, and many greetings to everybody who is with us today. So I just don't want to miss any messages and any questions. If there is any, please don't hesitate right away to write us. We will be. I mean. Our guest, Diane Jones, today, the virtuoso and the teacher of the Royal College of Music in London, he will be very happy to, to answer you. Yayan, except uh, this experience with the car that you had to drive with the harp uh, all over through <laughs> from London to Vienna, how many days did you did you take did this take? I, you know, I, I don't remember anything about the drive, but more than likely I was going 
to somewhere else on the way or after probably Italy because I always was always going to Italy to do something concerts normally and I do remember doing a, a kind of a big round trip and doing uh, uh, maybe it was a concert in Germany I can't remember but it's it's a long Jana it's 33 years ago I'm not <laughs> a computer <laughs> But you have such a good memory, you know. No. But 33 years ago, it's like yesterday. I feel really like it's yesterday, or at least I feel like I stopped between that. You know, I feel that that last stopped, and I remember almost everything. Or maybe because it was such an experience and such a really wonderful time for me, and the first time to meet all these harpists and to be in such a even. It was for you also the first time to be there. I think it was my first congress. Yes, absolutely. Um, it was great because, you know, in those days when you don't have the media we have now, this was the only way to meet with all these people from around the world. We all came and it was great. And, you know, the opening concert, which you already broadcast, Marisa, which was absolutely fantastic. I just I remember how nervous she was playing for hundreds of harpists listening to that. It's not easy, you know, and just to play the concerto. So everything was just so exciting. You know, it was meeting and all these people which you never heard before we, we you didn't have youtube before so we didn't know who anybody was so that was what was so exciting about it all that is different now and you you can't replicate that because everybody knows everybody and you can meet anybody at any time anywhere you know look at look now you're talking to me from from prague and you know this morning i was doing a lesson to one of my students in in france and yesterday i was doing a lesson to someone in in malaysia so it's you know it, the whole world has changed it's changed so much that's absolutely true we have there a message from denitsa dimitrova many greetings from both oh, of us sure. how are you <laughs> yeah it's lovely not only we didn't have internet but also for harpists in bulgaria hearing some recordings of yours jana and yuyan was such a delight and some great chance we were literally apart from all imp the important events that were going on in the harp world. Sending you both of love and missing you. Thank you very oh, much, and it's a, we, I hope to see you again because uh, now at least we have really this opportunity to to meet like this. But of course, we miss each other. But true is that at that time of of the congress in Vienna, I felt like everybody was excited to find something new, which was yeah. really not touchable for anybody, right, at that moment. And it was for you also the, uh, like the last time, I, I bet that you performed also in Paris. I know that you perform in Paris. I have the recording <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I remember there was a concert in Paris and I was going, I think I was driving to Spain at that time. So I stopped off in Paris to do this concert and I know there was then something else. And I, I, I just remember Paris was a little bit crazy because I think I was late or the the, uh, the event was in a place where they didn't finish in time. I just remember some kind of this, you know. Mm -hmm. I think Paris was the last time I played. And then after that, I was just always busy or, you know, I, I didn't go very many times. I know that it's sometimes very difficult to schedule it with, with all the activities you have also. But you mentioned Marisa. I think that... I hope and I wish that Marisa is with us today as well because she was writing me before. So I hope she managed to get online. So greetings from both of us and we just Hello Marisa. Are you there? I hope you're there. I can't see who is on. So I don't know who is on. We can't see who is on, but I really hope that she can listen to us and know that we we think of her very much. And I hope that she feels much better already. And uh, I also hope that there is a chance in the couple of days to have an interview with with her directly, which would be fantastic for everybody. And of course, it will be honor to have her online. To persuade her. We will try to persuade her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and of course, the time, as is a question for everybody, it's very difficult. What what have you planned before the lockout or and lockdown and what what actually has happened in your life during this well, period? It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great shame, but it's what I, I was listening to your chat yesterday, was it with Petra? Um, mm -hmm. And it's, I was just agreeing with everything. It's the same for all of us, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel, I actually feel very, very sorry for the young people now who had all the live concerts cancelled and all of those people who are just surviving on playing live you know all of that is, is, has vanished for the time being we have to hope that after a few months maybe six months that we can start again to uh, appreciate live music because i don't care how good the recording is how good uh, the reproduction is you cannot you cannot and the same they said yesterday you cannot replicate a live performance it's there's some there's magic 
an electric in the air when there's a good performer and you cannot reproduce that. You know? That's absolutely true. But there was, uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> it was in February, no, it was all getting a little bit more serious in February and I was so excited to go to the Marinsky in St. Petersburg in February and I remember doing applying for the visa and everything was getting ready. I was going to book my flight and all this news was developing, developing to end up more people, you know, more uh, infections and all this kind of thing. And I thought, I'm going to leave my flight a little bit, another week, another week. And it was now the week before the festival at the end of February. You know about this, I know. And I didn't book in the end because I was so afraid that I would get stuck in St. Petersburg, which I know it's a fantastic city I've been before, but to be stuck there or in a lockdown there was no joke. So anyway, and I think I, literally the day, two days before the festival, they cancelled and I was lucky I did not book a flight. So it, it alleviates many problems for many people. So that was one very, very sad uh, thing. I had to decline this beautiful invitation to go and play at the Marinsky Theatre, which I never done before. And also it was to play with Sofia, which I know I was on a panel many times with Sofia competing in competitions, and she's one of the most fantastic players I ever heard in my life, and I was excited. So, Sofia, if you're listening, please, let's do it next year, I hope, and we can pick up where we should have been this year. Okay? I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm very sure, Sofia, Sonichka will certainly invite you, so she will never, never forget it. And, of course, you will come for sure to, to St. Petersburg because it's beautiful. That was great. Yeah. And it's a beautiful and festival. In, immediately after this, I was doing, I do a little competition for young instrumentalists in, in, in Wales, uh, where I have fantastic sponsor and a fantastic team of people who are running this competition in a beautiful place called Greganog. It's a strange name, but Greganog is in mid Wales. And this is an annual competition we do for young people. We did the first round by video or CD or whatever. And, you know, we had all the finalists ready to come, but of course, at the end of April, we couldn't do that. So we are hoping, hoping, all being well, that we can do this at Christmas time. But again, this is, is waiting confirmation as to what will be the situation at that time. So that was another thing we had to postpone. And then, as you know, we had a wonderful weekend uh, event pl planned in London. Jana, you were going to join me and we were going to do a, a Super String Sunday at the Royal College of Music where we had a fantastic program. Uh, Irina was coming to do a masterclass, Stephen was coming, you were coming, Emanuela was coming from Italy, all these people were all prepared to come, you know, and these days we do all this for the love of, of our instrument and for the music, and, and unfortunately I just say I'm very sorry to all of you that um, it's not going to happen, you know, uh, who knows, maybe we can do it again uh, in the next year or something, I don't know, it all depends, because when you plan these things, they already have next year's planned. So I don't know if we can replace this. So that was another very sad thing. And then I had a wonderful little uh, week of concerts with my uh, quartet, uh, harp quartet from Italy with Emanuela. Uh, if you're listening, hello, Emanuela. I hope you're there um, in the Isle of Man in the one fantastic little festival. It's called the Mananan Festival in Port Erin with uh, John. John, uh, I'm very sorry we had to pull this. But in the end, of course, the whole festival was pulled that was going to be uh, in June. So that, again, would not have happened yet. But uh, obviously, they had to cancel this. And we were doing our harp. Leonard Harp Quartet was doing a concert for them and three or four other concerts in my kind of mid Wales, Shropshire region, where uh, we had a very nice week of, of work together to play wonderful things. So that has also been canceled. So, you know, all these things, it takes a lot of work to uh, Put this together especially trips involving four people four harps or even five harps because we were going to do uh one piece which i love very much which was written for joseph mona in his memory actually and it's very strange that this festival was arranged by joseph mona and he was absolutely fantastic uh in japan where i uh, visit them many times so we were going to play the piece that uh, joseph had called fed chrysanthemum at the end with five people but anyway hopefully will happen in next year because John, I think, is uh, planning this year's program next year. So let's let's hope for better things next year because 2020, I think, is written off already. So, you know, with all these things, I hope that we can pick them up in the future. 
I'm sure there will be any opportunity and I'm sure that the people would love to, to postpone it to find time because of course to, to have you somewhere to perform it will be fantastic. We have Emanuela on, we have it, uh, she's with us, so greetings also from both of us to her. Hi, Emanuela. <laughs> and of course I'm also sorry that uh, the Congress in Wales is cancelled this year and it postponed for the next year where we were supposed to play together the double concerto, so I really hope that it will happen next year again. So <laughs> And that was the next thing we were going to do together in Cardiff, no? we were going to do this uh, concerto. so you know it's it's very sad because obviously next time is going to be different and, and uh, i don't know if we can do this just exact copy next year absolutely but what's now uh, in during the summer do you have any already set up plans or it depends how long now we can come out of this situation because of course i have my annual um harp six days of uh, master class and, and course in Italy with again with Emanuela in, in Villa Medici near Milan but of course that is a bit of a hot zone at the moment that nobody can go but of course this will change in the next few months we hope but if it will change enough to make it safe to do it I don't know yet mm. but we will, we will keep this open for the time being because that was going to be the end of August purely because of the Congress was in July so we move the date to the end of August. So we will have to wait and see if that can happen. But, it, you know, it's easy now for people to find out what's going on. We just leave a message or leave a, 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 a sign on here and then they can find out if it's happening or not. Otherwise, um, <laughs> I'm learning new stuff. <laughs> I, actually, I, it was very strange because I'm here in London. I have a very small apartment in London now because uh, my main apartment is in Italy. And I don't have any music here. I'm very lucky that uh, Salvi is very kindly lent me a harp just so I can keep my fingers working. And a friend of mine from Manchester, I don't know if she's listening. Sharon, if you're listening, you sent me a Chopin uh, Nocturne, which I was I love very much. So I'm going to record that later, not now, uh, and put it on because it works beautifully on the harp. And then after doing that, I learned another Chopin Nocturne. Uh, so we will do a little bit of Chopin very soon. You, I'll send it to you, Anna. <laughs> that would be, we are excited to hear everything like that. Of course, it's wonderful. So during these times, you, you have just time to practice and of course, give lessons online, right? Now the, yeah, now the, the summer term has started. I'm, I'm doing my lessons all online. Uh, I, I'm trying to get my students to be uh, regular and have a routine. Don't lose this time because, mm -hmm. you know, okay, it, some people think, oh, well, we don't have school now, we don't have exams now, we can have three months vacation. Wow, great, TV, couch potatoes for all this time. But it will end at some stage, and I'm going to ask you, what have you been doing all this time? You know, you were at home, you had a harp, you could study, you could learn new things, and nothing has been done. <laughs> so uh, be aware, if you're, if you're coming back in September, we want to see something done, and you've been working, because... It will end eventually. Of course, it will end. Life might be different, but life doesn't end, you know. And particularly music. M music. We must be positive. We must carry on music. It's very important. True, and of course, this time it's a really good time for us to to take time for learning new music and to to prepare for what we don't know what happens, but still be prepared because it can stop. Uh, it can start to be open so quickly, and then if we will not be prepared. It can be very surprising for all of us. So absolutely, it, can, it could come back like this, and then they want you to play something <laughs> next week. And, uh oh, <laughs> all of them could be not practicing. <laughs> Yeah, have a problem. <laughs> I mean, for, for us as professional, I think that we have our rules when we know and we know how to, to make the discipline. But maybe for the students, they really need to learn this. And this is a good occasion for them also to, to find out. Discipline and routine. Make yeah. a routine. You know, you can have part of the day where you're always studying and then part of the day you watch the TV or whatever. But the routine is very important. That's right, right. We have now the message that it's the Chopin is really very beautiful on the harp, which I agree. <laughs> so, yes, and so you, know it, huh? you know the C sharp minor, you know it, yeah. So anyway, so that's my. I will when I go back to Italy, I'm going to. Uh, I want to record this and, and I want to put it there because it's a very melancholic, very thoughtful piece for all those poor people who have lost friends, who have suffered, and who will be suffering after this horrendously terrible time. I think it's just been 
exceptionally, exceptionally difficult for many people. Really. Mm. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, to come back to your professional as well, I, it would maybe interest many people. How did you come to the harp? Who brought you to the harp? Who was your inspiration? <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is going to take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> we have time now. Let's go on. <laughs> Well, no, I've been playing the harp for more than 50 years, Jana. You you were not born yet when you started. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, just about. Yes, I was six years old when I started uh, in my school in Wales, which is mid-Wales, Montgomeryshire, and my, the name of the school was in San Varcarainion. <laughs> I had I was lucky because a peripatetic, a peripatetic teacher came to live in this area and uh, she she really wasn't a, a a big harpist she accompanied herself to sing but she played the harp and there was no one else so she started many 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 young uh, children to play the harp and what we were we were so lucky because the schools paid for the little lever harps and they put them in all the schools so the harp was always in the school in the corner of the room and i was just drawn to this instrument i just went uh, you know, I, in, when I was six or seven, I was already playing the piano, violin, also the trumpet and the harp and all these things. And I used to go to the youth orchestra, even to the brass band. I went with the, with the trumpet for a while, but it, it didn't, I didn't suit this very well. Um, and that's how I started. And it, it was just one thing after another. It, they, it just grew, you know. And then I, had, I went to a very wonderful, inspiring concert uh, in my local, uh, the nearest festival to my home was in Llanbathlin, which is in the Welsh borders with England, Shropshire. And Marisa was there with her second husband, Christopher Hyde Smith, and they were doing a recital for Flute and Harp. And this uh, was memorable for me. It really was memorable. I was about nine years old. And I will never forget because uh, in this is a beautiful church and there was a very high platform where obviously she was playing with Christopher. And the top of the harp uh, the, the the gold line, as you know, has a, a, a metal crown, and this crown hit the uh, the the orb of the church that was hanging above. You know, it was a big brass orb, and I'll never forget Mary pulling the heart back. Oops! It hit the top of the orb. You know, so this is what I remember. And then there was a party afterwards, and I, I still have the the LP, the recording that she had. Uh, in those days, Marisa, I remember it all very well. And you went to Bruno's house after in Sh uh, Bruno Schlecker's house in Tambasin, and we met. I was I was so small. My mother took me there, and I just remember it vividly so well. So that was the first very serious inspirational uh, concert that I had. And then after that, it, it's all a catalog of things that happened just almost accidentally. But you know, th what will be will be. I believe in that. And if you if you follow the right path the things the things generally the doors open and then when i was uh 13 i went into the orchestra of wales which was great because i uh, be began in fact carol was there carol thomas uh, she was in at the same time and that's where i met carol for the first time and we were being coached by the goosen sydney goose uh mary goosen sorry who was our coach and she was the goosen's family very very famous in 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 uk for music and at 16, I went to the National Youth Orchestra of Great Britain. So I have done my stint in orchestra also, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I met Marisa uh, formally as a, as a teacher for the first time. And that is when I really started working seriously on technique. And basically because uh, she had to change my technique completely because I, I was playing with bad position and all this, and, and it was during that time, I, I remember starting, I went home after this course, I think it was in Godalming, in, in near Guildford, in Surrey, in England, and I had to start again. I told my, my parents, um, I've got to start again, and I was literally scales from, from scratch, you know, mm -hmm. doing the articulation and the fingers and all this. I, I always remember these things. And after that, it was obviously it was uh, RCM, and uh, and after this, it was almost uh, immediately into professional life. I only did four years at RCM because I was too busy to go back. I was so happy to leave RCM that I didn't have time to to go to the to the college, you know. But I already did Israel by then, and we were already you know doing the uh, the concerts abroad. And I was I was very I've been very lucky. I've been very busy 
for uh, at least 30, the first 30 years of my uh, professional life. And, and after that, um, I started teaching at the college, which is now the, the, my main source of work here in the UK. A long way, but uh, yeah, you achieved the most highest position you could have ever, uh, everybody could thought about and dream about. So it's really wonderful. And uh, I just, I did not get, what was your, the, the first teacher, she just only picked you up or you were so impressed about the harp by yourself? She, she her name was Frances Morn Jones. She was, she uh, was a singer more than the harpist, but she, she accompanied herself to sing. Mm -hmm. And she was more of a folk singer and uh, a, a Welsh traditional. She was a wife of a, of a minister, a priest. And she was fantastic. She took me and we did concerts from the age of nine. I was playing concerts with her, like in an ensemble, a trio. There were three of us. And but she she uh, I needed more technical foundations, which were lacking in those days. And that is why I had to start again when Marisa found me. In fact, Marisa first saw me when there was a competition in the Isle of Man. Do you remember that? It's a little bit before your time, I think. That was when I was, oh my goodness, I can't remember. I think maybe I was about 16. Mm -hmm. uh, Marisa was there and I remember playing the Dussek Sonata in the final. I played it so fast that <laughs> it was a little bit out of control. And then there was a, a competition, the first Salvi competition in London. It was in Oxford, uh, not in London, in Oxford. And I think that was 1979, something like this. And I remember meeting Marisa there. Vera Dulova was there. She played uh, a recital there. And in fact, on the harp on the, the Salvi that I later bought myself from Marisa, because that there were two special harps, which Marisa had one and I had the other. Anyway, uh, and at that point, I remember Marisa coming to me and she said, there is a place for you waiting in London. And that was so wonderful to know. I, I didn't apply anywhere else. I just applied to the college. I went straight there and I didn't do this what they do these days, I applied there, applied there, and they wait for the best deal, you know. It was different in those days, it was very different. You are inspired by a musician and you go to that musician, you stay with that musician. Absolutely. Because you can, you can study with 50 different teachers around the world, but they still can't make you play good. That has to come from work from yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have different uh, perspectives of the music, different interpretations of the music, but the fundamental is you have to learn it. And you can only do that yourself. Yes, but you had really, you were really lucky to have Marisa as your teacher, like from the from that age, because she's yes. such inspiration and she's really such a such an artist and such a such a personality, which there is really rarely find some found someone like that. And you were really lucky also because of the technique. We were already talking Absolutely. with some of the guests before how important the technique from the beginning is, and it's mm -hmm. really. The, the most important is really the, the teachers who can make your technique correct. Because as, as older you get, it's more difficult to change it. So, I, Well, I think I was literally at the last moment because even at 15, 16, it's quite late. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, this is now 30, uh, almost 40 years ago since I came to London in 1981 to study. So we're almost 40 years ago. There were less good players around this is because since then of course many good students have gone around back to, from uh, education from their teachers and it's like parsley it's growing everywhere the better the standard is getting better and better technically i think the standard of playing the harp has changed trans been transformed in the last 40 years by good teachers that are good students that have studied with good teachers and so on and so on so, on. so you know in those days it was okay i changed uh, things around at 16 and, 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 and went with it. But if you do that today, it's, I think it's almost too late. You, you need to have this at 12 maybe because the level is much, much higher now. You know, we have people applying for college playing intermediate sonatas and all this kind of thing. Whereas before that would be something you would learn for your final exam, you know. That's so that's the difference. The level is totally different now. Absolutely. And I would like to mention also that you met Nicola Zabaleta, right? Absolutely, yes. He was another inspiration of mine because, of course, you can see the, the direct link with Marisa. And I was so lucky to go one summer to San Sebastian, obviously arranged through Marisa, because he didn't teach. He, didn't, he wasn't really wanting to teach many people. 
but uh, Marisa organized uh, or arranged with Nicanor that I went there. Again, I drove there. That was another story. Uh, I drove there from London to stay a, a few weeks in San Sebastian. And uh, this was in about, I think, 1986, maybe it was after Israel. And um, it was great, absolutely great to have worked with one, you know, one of the uh, most important names in our history of harp playing as a soloist, remember? He was only a soloist and he had so many compositions written for him, concertos written for him. And he was just respected the world over as a as a serious musician. And that to me is very, very important. How was he as a person? Wonderful, wonderful. Very sweet, very soft. Um, I had to, uh, of course I played his Hongacher, he played Hongachers, and which was very difficult for me because I was, I have always played mostly Salvis everywhere and the difference is quite difficult. But he, he was just wonderful. I, I mean, the things he taught me was always uh, what people teach now is to slow, slow, slow. You do everything half speed until you can do it. You know, you know, Yana, how is the teaching? And it's the same. But he was just such a lovely man, you know, and also his wife, Graciela, was always cooking lunch for me. And it was, it was a memorable time, memorable time. And he was uh, giving some master classes, or he was absolutely not teaching at all, even the master classes. He he did some master classes because he came to the college to do a master class once. Mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. after his, I think it was after his Wigmore Hall, his last Wigmore Hall in London, he came to do a class in college, and um, I remember that very well. But he he didn't uh, teach on a regular basis. No. I see. And now you are based in. London, but you live also in Italy, right? Well, I have this love affair with Italy. I always loved Italy. You know, my first concert in Italy was in, in Liguria, in Santa Margherita, near Portofino. And oh my God, if you, have you been there, Yana? It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, wow, you're going to have to come, okay? <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, and uh, again, this was organized one summer. And ever since that, I, I just... There's some I have a connection there which I loved very much, and uh, most years since then I went back to Italy, whether it was for a concert or concerts, a trip, or a vacation. You know, I've been all around Italy, and it's it's beautiful. And I, uh, in the last few months, uh, my heart has bled for Italy because it, they have really suffered with what is going on at the moment. And um, you know, I hope that. A, a form of normal, normality can return there because they rely so much on uh, people visiting and the tourism and they have such uh, an amazing uh, wealth of uh, art and um, all these beautiful things, yeah. Heritage, the heritage of the art. But you have to miss it also because of course all the flights have been cancelled. So you had been blocked in London somehow but you are, yeah. as I heard, if I can say that you are going to Italy, but you are going again to drive. <laughs> Which well, is crazy, absolutely crazy. I, the problem is I need to go there very soon for some technical reasons. And um, I can go because I have residency in Italy as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm allowed to go where I'm resident. Uh, so I have to drive there, basically. And you will go by with the harp or with the well, no, no, my harp is my harp. This is not my harp. My harp, my, both my harps are in Italy at the moment, okay. and I miss them, you know. So they are, they are there, and um, hopefully, I will be reunited very soon. <laughs> I hope so too, and I only hope that the trip will be without any problem. Also, I just want also to mention to some of uh, the people who did not know and they are ever you have a new harp right uh, now very about two years old harp which is very unique can you just tell us a little bit about it okay um as you probably know uh, i was uh, a great friend of victor salvi for many many years and um in the last well victor died mm, five years ago now something like this i think and in the last 10, 20 years of his working life at the factory, he was developing a new sound. Mm -hmm. And it was the sound I was looking for, you know, for a long time. 
And in the end, uh, I just mentioned these special harps I had. Uh, one was uh, uh, belonged to Marisa and the other one fine. But in, I had both of them in the end because I bought Marisa's from her. So I had the pair of these very special harps that only two were made for the 25th anniversary. And uh, Marco wanted one of these for uh, the museum, the Salvi Museum in, in, uh, in the factory. So in, in exchange, not quite exchange, I have, of course, uh, one has to buy these things. Uh, he made me uh, a new harp. And I, I said, look, I was playing a harp. Uh, I think it could have even been with you in Prague. Do you remember that beautiful harp, the gold one, the salvi that was there? The sound was, for me, divine. And I said to Marco, Marco, this is the sound I want, but I want it on this harp. I said, oh, why do you want that? Why do you have to be so difficult? You know, okay, well, I want this harp, but I want it in blue. <laughs> <laughs> so he made me a blue Minerva. And instead of uh, the normal blue and yellow gold, I love blue and silver together. So he made it in blue and, and white gold. Uh, but it's already four years ago, Jana. It's four years now. I should since... really like one or two years it, it it's four years ago and so uh that was another trip i went to uh, pick up this harp one it would be four years this summer mm -hmm. and that was when i was also looking uh, where i would like to live in italy at the same time so the harp was in the car and i was looking around of where i'm going to live um and that is how the whole thing happened and, and, and that's why i have this the, i have to say the harp is divine it's the most beautiful i love it very much and um it, that's why i just wanted the, the the new sound because also with with harps and as you know if we play a lot and i play a lot of of things that require an awful lot of pedal work if you do a lot of transcriptions the pedaling is the problem mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the piano music is much more chromatic than harp and to do chromatics of course your, your feet are, are as busy as the fingers so in, in this case, the mechanism has uh, is put under pressure. Mm -hmm. And to have good silent mechanism is, is basically you need a, a, a newer instrument. Mm -hmm. And my harps were already 30, 40 years old. And uh, the one I used to play, I had been around the world at least three or four times with it in flying, you know, in excess luggage and all this. So it was feeling its age. And that's why I thought it was a good moment to have one more harp to mm -hmm. to finish my playing days. Um, something that I really enjoy playing, and, and basically, I really do. It's 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 joy to play. And now you have to promise to all of us that as soon as you come to Italy, and you will have your harp next to you, and you will learn and pre pre prepare this Chopin or any new piece, that you will post it, and I will of course post it on the channel as well, so that we will have a chance to really hear you live on your beautiful blue harp. <laughs> okay, well, that is my next project for you, Jana. I do it for you, and we can share it on here, and we will put it for in the memory of all those people that we missed during this terrible time, and I will, of course, I will do that for you from the blue harp in my little balcony in Genoa. We are all looking forward. That must be really done yeah because it will be really wonderful and we will be very happy and yeah and just tell me also uh what's after this everything has happened and what was your plan after i mean in the in the autumn do you have anything what i hope that will come out already so that you will be able to do do you know ev as, at the moment everything has been really put on hold and all the other plans that uh, mm -hmm. there are one or two things coming off later this year everybody is saying Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. We we don't know how long this will go on. So really, at the moment, it's just I was like I was listening to you yesterday. Everybody is the same. We're all waiting now to see mm -hmm. what is going to be left after all this. You know, mm -hmm. I do think there will be a lot more work like this, working remotely online, uh, and I hope that uh, there will be better systems for us to listen to the sound because very often I find. This is very dependent on the quality of the broadband or the, or the Wi-Fi, the, the mm -hmm. quality of the, of the connection, because sometimes it's it's so-so, sometimes it's very good. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, I think, now that so many people are depending on it, it, it will improve. 
-hmm. and um, maybe there will be less traveling for a long time. And you must feel this, Jana. You traveled so much. I think you were in a plane three, four, five times a week. You know, and I, I, I fear this this is not going to be so easy for quite some time. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's really something what is very unusual because we are not able to travel. Uh, we can maybe travel by car now, even uh, the borders are starting to be open. But of course, there are some restrictions which which keeps us at home because, of course, if you go out by car, then you have to come back and you have to go either for the test if you don't have the COVID or you have to be in the quarantine for 14 days, which uh, actually, you know, it's not uh, not worth it to do it. So it's better to stay at home and there are no flights so you have no other chance than to, to be at home. But at least again, I'm saying that the, I'm very happy that we have this kind of communication that we can at least be co in contact with the people through the technique and through these internet connections, if it works, of course. Yeah. Well, this, this is quite a good connection today, I think. No? Very, very well. Yeah, I'm very happy about it because it's, of course, sometimes I'm so worried about uh, when the connection is not good that it can destroy all the, the smooth, smooth way of communication. Yeah, and I just want to say you are also very often in the World Harp competitions jury. So uh, tell me what kind of experiences you have from those, those panels. <laughs> Generally, I I really enjoy this, um, but again, it depends on the the characters you have to work with. You know, sometimes there are people that don't see or don't hear or don't appreciate the music in the same way. So um, this is often an argument I have uh, in my school because I say, look, you know, if you're being assessed by someone who doesn't really uh who is not really in tune musically uh, it's not really very fair because uh it's also subjective you know music so um generally i enjoy the 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 jury work yes because you see who who are the new people who are the young the good young people who are coming forward and hopefully uh they they get through my objective always has been that the, the most deserving person gets the prize. And uh, that for me is very, very important because I, I in, in during my earlier years, use if you like, I had uh, very mixed experiences with competition myself because there were characters on there that didn't, uh, didn't agree, if you like, with um, my version or my interpretation of things and I, I did suffer quite a lot with this in, in several times. Uh, of course, now it's a little bit different because uh, there are many, many more people around who can be on these panels. And in, when I was in my 20s, it was always the same people you know, because there were so few uh, world-class harpists in those days. Now, mm -hmm. it, now I think it's different. I do think it's different. And, and I do hope and I think it's better, much better, yes. It has been the first time we really met together in 2007. I think it was in Israel at the World uh, Competition in, in the jury. So it was the very first time when we had a chance really to chat and to, to be to spend time as a as a colleagues, uh, not colleagues in the, in the right. I remember, yes. I remember this. I remember this very well. I remember well, I was a little bit late, no arriving, and you were all sitting around the table, and I saw you sitting the other side, and I saw the. Corner of your eye, yes, I'm going to like this girl, I thought to myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we go on so well ever since, no? That was a really wonderful time over there. I, I remember very much. It, it was uh, still very open. I mean, it was so without any stress, without any fear about, you know, anything. We were really almost uh, traveling and wa walking there everywhere, as I remember, without any, any problem. Absolutely, yes. Yes, I remember that. And is there any plan for you to come for any other competition now? I mean, the jury now for for in the future. Uh, I don't at the moment. I don't have no. I don't have. Um, I have plans to go to the Far East quite a bit more in the future, but um, again, everybody is waiting to see before they make uh, definitive uh, plans because you know we don't know how long this is going to be. And we don't know how long it will be before we can travel safely and 
you know, uh, basically safely again. That's really true. I just uh, looking, we have some new messages there, greetings, and uh, mm -hmm. we are glad that also for the people they found it as a good connection. So Adina Harout is there and uh, we greet Israel. <laughs> we will see also very soon online. So I'm really very glad that today it works very, very, very good. And Jan, when are you leaving to Italy? Tell us. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You will contact us as soon as you are going to be there, right? <laughs> I'm here a few more days yet. <laughs> <laughs> But again, I've been in this apartment for since the end of February. I had a class in school, which was, uh, I think, yes, about the end of February, March, April. It's at least nine, eight weeks, eight weeks. I haven't been anywhere. <laughs> That's long. That's long. But I think that we are on the same boat, all of us. We have now greetings from our student from London. <laughs> so greetings. <Is> that? So, <laughs> and Stefanie Zimmer, who was with us on Tuesday, so also greetings. And unfortunately, with Steffi, it was really a bad connection. And I felt really so sorry for that. And I hope that we will have a chance to make a new, new interview later on so that she can speak more also about her experiences but um i need still to know something more about the congress in vienna if you remember anything else then if you remember what did you feel when you were performing there if you remember because of course if it's something special what in your case you were already so experienced performer so maybe for you it was just one of the things but maybe not maybe you were having it such, such a special moment as well so maybe you have some memories from that no i all i remember is i was i was quite nervous because you know, I was only playing one piece and just to go on called, I remember it was a beautiful big room in, in this palace uh, full of people and without any warm up, you know, the Parashavas is not easy at the best of times. And it, uh, in those days I was playing the, this version introduction cadenza. Uh, but since, uh, since I was with Zabaleta, he gave me the, the, original version which is of course grand fantasy opus 57 and of course now i much prefer this version because it structurally and musically it makes much more sense because the, you have the the big variations and it's a, for me one of the probably the best parashavas solo piece for harp it's very very good uh, but no i remember i remember a few of the concerts um i remember there was a sort of excitement going around Uh, you know, going to the various events because some of them were in small places, I remember, and they were full and, and there was a wonderful kind of buzz about uh, in Vienna at that time. And it was it was great. I, I remember it with great uh, fondness and, you know, uh, it was a happy time, happy time. It, it made really, as I said, also the atmosphere of the whole Congress was very special. And uh, it, it was made also by Josef Mollar, who was who is going to be in your video speaking at the end as i was saying that your applause was so endless that he had to stop <laughs> he was running like with the hands up please stop <laughs> you were, but, no. you were... <laughs> but of course joseph went uh, from vienna he was uh, he was uh, a harpist in vienna and he went to japan he was they call him the father of the harp in japan you know and he did amazing things in in japan and uh, was subsequently inviting me many times to go to uh, be on his jury in, in the, the harp festival and the competition in for the Nippon harp competition. I think I've already been five or six times to Tokyo to do this. And that now is, is very, very important. And the harpists who come from Japan are, are so amazing. And there are so many of them, you know, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. So, To, uh, to to have been involved with him in, in, in that way there was, was fantastic, really fantastic. Yes, and I think that because he was really the one who, he was also the father of that Congress because he was really arranging it. Of course, he had some people around him, but he was the main, main person who was doing everything. So he was also introducing every concert and he was really the person who like made the, the feeling as a home and as a really like home home feelings for, for everybody like family. So it's absolutely true because he was one of the genuine musicians of the harp 
and the, the, and he invited all the good people he would invite there were there was no there were no politics involved with this and he was he just wanted to do it for the good of the instrument and that's what really it should all be about as you were saying yesterday it's about um promoting the harp to be an equal solo instrument and that's what we're doing all the time you know finding new repertoire which i love to do by the way uh i love to do different things i don't we get bored of the same old repertoire all the time but there there's endless possibilities we we don't realize how lucky we are that the harp is such a versatile instrument you mm -hmm. know to play mm -hmm so many different uh, genres on the harp it doesn't have to be piano music it can be guitar music it can be voice music for the voice i mean we can we can do all these things and transport it around so we are very fortunate in that way and that's what we need to promote is the instrument you know that's what that's what it's all about what this always makes me a question when we we all know what the harps has as a as a opportunities what possibilities we can do what every varied things we can uh, pro produce on the harp like different styles different as you said we are also mobile with with the instrument we can just do really many things we can play piano music we can do tell me which instrument has all of that and why oh, we no have no instrument no, no. no. The piano can the piano can do most of it, but the piano can't do glissandos, and the piano can't do you know you can't carry the piano around unless you're uh, Rubinstein or whoever who carried the piano around with them. You know you have to take the piano that's on the stage. We take our harp with us. Well, we, we certainly used to all the time, and I I used to fly. I've flown around the world many times with the harp as excess luggage. Of course, you can't do that anymore. That life has changed in that way, but still. Uh, the harp is more transportable, you know. Uh, but what is very interesting these days, I think, the harp is developing many different genres of music, and, and many good harpists are, are finding their own channel. I mean, look at Remy, for example. He has his own style, and that is fantastic because he's creating his own market in a way, and it's it's very good for him, and he's very good at doing that. And other people will do other different styles, and. And that's what that's what's great about the harp. It's versatility. It's versatile. And also, you can have those who just want to p play pure harp music, or those who p want to just play pure music, which is more what I like to do. Because uh, for me, it's the quality of the music that matters more than what it was written for. I mean, I'm sure if uh, if Chopin had uh, my beautiful uh, one of the beautiful new harps uh, today in during that time or Tchaikovsky, or any of these fabulous composers, they would have also written for it. The mm -hmm. harp was a late developer. And that's the problem we are catching up with. And that's why we lost uh, so much repertoire during that time, because it was complicated. The pedals were new and all this kind of thing, you know. But we have all that now. Mm -hmm. But still, the question for me, it's uh, very interesting to know, or your your feeling, or your your um, your view, when we have all these possibilities in these days so we are now talking on, on the certain days now that we are still uh, the people look at us like the harpists are like the secondary you know why why it is like that i always question this because if you have someone in the uh, in the even from the past that they play piano violin and harp they don't even sometimes mention the harp that they played like that it would be something what is not necessary to mention. That makes me somehow sad because I think that for that person, I don't want to say it particularly by someone, but maybe for them, the harp was the main, you know? And uh, so it is so strange that the harp is still taken like the secondary and if it's not necessary to mention, we will not mention the harp. <laughs> I, I think the root of the problem in, in all of this is that it's the music, it's the music, what is written, we need good, we need composers who are passionate about the instrument. Look at Parash Shafaz, look what he wrote for the harp. I imagine, I mean, how it works amazingly well on the harp. Uh, I don't know many composers. I mean, yes, of course, Grand Jani and Rani and all these people were, uh, were harpists who, who, who composed for their own instruments. But that, that, is, that is the secret, is the, more, the, the new music. We need good new music for the harp. And then hopefully if somebody can make a, a good, uh, a hit, but it's the quality of the music that's what stays. Why is it that the best music in the world is still surviving three, four hundred years later? 
because it's quality. Quality will remain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is it not because I had, when I had the interview a week ago with, with Sasha Boldership, we were also coming to this topic. Uh, don't you feel, because my opinion is that because the harp is played so different way by each harpist, so that it's not really like in violin, you, you really know who play, they play different, but they have still the same uh, way of, of touching the instrument. You know, but in the in the harp, it is so different that some harpists are playing like very like a saloon music. Some people really work. Some people really express the, the performing like that they are really a solo instrument. But uh, so, don't you think that it is this is the main matter that we have not one style, not style, but a way how to play on the harp that everybody understands the same way. That it should be this is the way how the harp should sound i think uh, i've always thought this and i think one of the main problems with the harp is that uh 99 of those uh music people or lovers or people who follow music don't really know the difference between just a simple glissando sound or somebody who who had to study really hard to make something sound fantastic and you can For too long, uh, I think bad players got away with murder. And, uh, you know, just because it sounds pretty, oh, that must be amazing. Mm. But it's not. That's that's the problem we have, you know? And uh, you can't change that. It takes, and the harp became all this salon business. It it went away from the platform, uh, the solo platform, and it became a salon instrument. And so what is a salon instrument? It just plays music in the background or what? It's not at the big Steinway on the concert uh, platform. So, and that's, there are not many people who can do that. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't hear it in a really convincing way. Yes, there are, most people can play a simple little sweetie, 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 flowery, watery music on the harp. But that to me is not a serious uh, a, a player. You know, a, a serious player for me who really explores the instrument and makes the audience listen. That's what we have to do. It's not just something pretty. You have to make the audience listen with a musical message. And I feel that there is a some kind of magic circle because if uh, if really there is an option that the harp is put in the platform as a concert on the concert as a solo instrument often, and the people has a chance to listen to the harp often. They will start to also understand the differences, and they they will be able to really understand the instrument by itself, like they understand piano and violin because they hear it and they hear one piece by many varied performer, and they can already see oh I like this better and this I like better. But in the harp, if you play one piece, the next person cannot play that piece for 10, 15 days, 15 years after that. So the people there is a new generation who has never heard a piece before. So they have no chance to even understand the instrument because they didn't, don't have any comparison. And I think that this is something what is also main matter in the harp world that we don't have so many chances to play often as the other instrument. That's true. Yes, that is very true. But you know, the only way this is this is it's a very, very slow progression. It has to come from generations of new people going out teaching young people and just broadening the message to uh, more and more people and you know we just hope that the promoters will will give the harp a, a better platform and continue to do so so that people can open their eyes to this beautiful sound that we have that's that's what it that's, to me that's, that's the sound the beautiful sound but honestly i know that the people love the harp They really love they and do. I agree. That's the thing that they are always impressed and they really like to hear it. So it it makes me somehow very strange understanding why the pr promoters don't want to put the harp <laughs> so often when the people want it, you know? So that's something what uh, makes me always questioning uh, why, why it is like that. So that they give more chances to the other instruments which are everywhere all the time. So, but it's not only about the harp, of course, we. I am talking about our instrument because it's our beloved one, but there are so many instruments, like even the wood in, uh, woodwind instruments, which they don't have so many chances as the other instruments as well. So yeah, I think true. that uh, it is really 
somehow I don't want to say that it should be changed, but of course I hope that there is a way how to progress more in this way as well, so that it will be worried. And that I hope that even a little bit this harp channel which I have created can also put the people more interested in in our instrument to to listen more to the harps and the varied varied performers and to to have the op opportunity to hear the same pieces also in the different way of of performing and i really hope that we have we have also some of your your performing new recordings there you have already i think three i posted there already from the past and today we will have another one from vienna 33 years ago <laughs> <laughs> 33 years ago <laughs> but you are really amazing as i said to those who were not here from, with us today from the very beginning i just really want to say that it, that performance of yours was really so so special and so so amazing that it has been inspiring for all of us and as i also mentioned twice already during this interview your applause was endless <laughs> and i have even when i cut it i put like second time third time, fourth time, I put the titles there because the people should know that there is not the end, that you are going still to play the encore and it's a recording and it will be the Duran Vals, right? Is it still in your repertoire or it has been already in that past or do you play no, it? No, actually, I like this very much, but now I play the, the Grand Fantasy, the whole, the whole piece, because I just feel it makes more sense musically. There's a, the most strong introduction with these huge chords and huge glissandos you know uh, i i think it's a fantastic piece i love i loved it since the it was always my party piece uh for a very long time and um but i think the original version is better but i didn't have it in those days <laughs> okay so i hope you will hear it and you will record it once so that we will be able to post it to also the complete version. Jan, is there anything what you would like to say to the people now? And uh, maybe you have still something in your mind to, to share with, with the young generation or even with your friends or whatever? Well, I want to say thank you to you for, for uh, creating this uh, great opportunity to, to chat like this and to say hello to everybody. But also to uh, to say to everybody, I hope that um, this very difficult time comes to an end very quickly, and that hope that we can all join together very soon and enjoy the joys of music in in a live in a live uh, situation. Thank you very much, Mia. I was really so pleased that you made time for us, that we could have spent also this hour together, and I thank very much to everybody who was with us who wrote us beautiful messages and we will go through, we will answer them. And we want to really thank you very much for your advices and for your experiences, for your memories, for your talk. And uh, we really hope that we will have a chance to, to have your concert live very soon and that we will enjoy it. And that we will see also in London soon as well, some greetings to all our students. <laughs> and uh, so mainly keep safe, and stay safe and keep healthy, stay, self, stay healthy. And I really send you many greetings and hope that we will meet very soon again. Thank you, Jana, very much. I wish love. everybody and to you all my best. Have a safe trip to Italy. Greetings to your friend and uh, yeah, all my best to you. Thank you again very much for, for your time today. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye. Bye. And I would like to still, before we will finish, I would like just to invite you for tomorrow. We will have our friend Rolando Optitz uh, on the live interview. And uh, now you will enjoy this beautiful performance of our today's guest, Yayan Jones and his Parish Alvars introduction, Cadenza and Rondo. And don't stop it afterwards. There is going to be encore by Diran Duval. So have a wonderful evening and I'll see you tomorrow. All my best. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>